fly to Perth to tell your folks that you were pe you tell your dad that you were pregnant? And is that when he told you that? He no, it all pregnant? happened um, when I yeah I did go to Perth to tell them mm. um, when I was ten weeks. Yeah, and um, I'll never forget telling my dad because I um, mum had known. You know, I think just as girls, you know, you share things with your mum and yeah. Um, but dad didn't know. And I took a little, um, like a little ultrasound, mm. a little picky over there. And I sat there and um, I said to him, look at this. And he looked at it and he went, what's that? And they looked at it and he went, is that, is that you? And I said, yeah. I said, well, it's not me. I said, it's the baby. And he was like, oh, and he just laughed. Aww. And he was so wrapped. He was so happy because my brother has kids. Right. But I think... Um, you know, me being the baby and, and the only girl, it was really, it was a really special moment yeah. for him too. And um, he was so thrilled. And, but then it was um, a few weeks later, only a couple of weeks later, and I'd left Perth and gone back, um, gone back home. And mum was calling me one day and she was sort of saying, oh, no, she was texting me saying, oh, can you get Sean to give me a call when you get a chance? I thought, that's really odd, but I thought, all right. And um, didn't think too much of it. And then she kept texting going, is he, you know, can he call me? And he was, Sean was with me, but he was out. Um, and then I ended up calling mum and um, she said, is Sean there? And I said, oh, he's just gone for a run, but he'll be back soon anyway. We talked for a bit and then I said, oh, he's just got home. And she said, oh, can you put him on for me? And I said, yeah, okay. And then... Um, Sean got on the phone and then he walked out of the room, like went a fair way away. Mm. And then he came back and just sort of looked at me and handed me the phone. And I was just like, what's going on? And then I got on the phone and mum, dad didn't tell me, mum just said, look, you know, and she sort of skirted around it for a little bit. She didn't actually say the words, but she sort of said, look, you know, your dad's, you know, how your dad's been feeling that pain in his ribs and, you know, we were going to go and get it checked out because he thought he'd strained some Mm. rib some intercostal muscles and I said yeah and then she sort of kept going well we went and got some tests and then we went back and you know it looks like there's something there and she just sort of wasn't saying it and I was like oh, what's she telling me mm. and I said mum what, what like what's going on and she said he's um there's some there's some tumors there and I said okay so I'm thinking tumours, that doesn't mean the end of the world. And then um, finally got it out of her that he had stage four lung cancer and that they felt pretty confident that it was related to asbestos because he worked um, in the in construction industry for years as an electrical engineer. And, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, asbestos was rife, especially mm -hmm. in Perth. And um, But they had to do more tests. And, you know, I don't think anything can prepare you for a phone call that you, one of your parents is going to die. No. Especially this wasn't like, oh, we've caught it early and mm. this was this is stage four and I knew what that meant. Mm. And so they said, look, we're going to, you know, then dad got on the phone and he was pretty upbeat. Right. And um, he said, don't worry, my lovely, we know we're going to do everything we can and I'm going to be fine. And he said, look, I've, I've had a call before like this about my mum. He said, so I know what, your feeling mm. and yeah he was very he was great about it and he said I'm so you know sorry that you know you have to hear this and you know but you know we, we're going to stick together we're, we're a strong family and you know we'll do what we can and um yeah so that was that was just you know it's just devastating oh. you know because you do think your parents are going to be yeah you always think of them as young and you always think of them as always being around and yeah. um and you know they're not immortal. I know. Sadly. And, yeah. And he knows my mum's got um, secondary lung cancer. Oh, okay. So from, that makes me upset. Mm. <laughs> but it, bowel cancer that went to the liver and the lung, and I just know that feeling of when yeah. you hear that news. Yeah. And that heavy feeling of my world's not okay anymore. Like, yeah. You know? It's, and it's constant. It's there. Yeah. You it's know. always in the back of my mind knowing that that's, there and that's going on yeah you know? so what was the the he met river though he did he did and he got to see me pregnant and yeah. you know I, I flew back and forth to Perth a lot through my pregnancy because I you know I wanted to be there and I wanted to help mum because that's the thing then you've got yeah. the other parent that's 
caring and totally. and doing the whole that side of things. Um, and so he got to see my pregnancy and, you know, sadly, Sean's dad died from prostate cancer oh, a month before River was born. So he didn't get to meet River, which... What a mixed emotion time you had. It like, was a mental time. It would be so strange to even know what, because you'd be happy, but so mm. sad. It would be so confusing. It was because, you know, when, when you're pregnant, especially when it's your first pregnancy, um, and the first grandchild for Sean's side, nor mm. under normal circumstances, that's such a time of celebration yeah. and joy for both families. And it was, but it wasn't. Yeah. Because cancer is an absolute, you know, just evil force. And it was consuming both families. Of course, yeah. His dad was rapidly declining. Um, and I think him, him passing away the month before River was born obviously impacted a lot of the joy that maybe his mum would have normally felt and his sister. Yeah. Um, Sean was, you know, helping his grieving mum and sister, but he had a newborn and yeah. how do you deal with all of that? And then my dad was three months from passing away. Like he was still doing, you know, chemo and all of that. And, you know, there was a point where I couldn't go over and be with them because I couldn't no. fly anymore. And, but bless him and mum, they came over the week before I was due. Right. And it was, it was, he was very frail. He'd lost a lot of weight and he was really sick. But he came over the week before I was due because he, he was determined to be near me for the birth. Yeah. And, um, and it was lucky they did because I, I ended up having River a week early and I gave birth the day after they got there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they were there for it, um, which was incredible. That was just such a big gesture from him to totally, me to do yeah. that. So I knew yeah. it wasn't easy to travel no. across the country in that state. And, no. um, you know, and my dad... Both my parents, my dad especially, was a very private man. They weren't the kind of parents that sort of wanted to be part of my sort of public life and all yeah. of that. They were very reserved and very private. And um, so for him to kind of, um, he didn't become a hermit when he was diagnosed, but he definitely didn't want to be out socialising no. and jumping on planes. And, yeah. you know, he just wanted to try and beat this thing and have a real private battle with it. Yeah. So for him to come over and be with me was an amazing, beautiful gesture. Yeah. Um, and then as soon as I felt ready to travel, I went back over to Perth. And then there was a point where we didn't know week to week he would change of whether he was feeling better or not. And mm. then um, I said to mum, should I be coming home? And she's like, look, it's so hard to say, sweetie. Like yeah. some days he's sitting up in bed talking and laughing and you'd swear that he's fine. And then she said other days it's not great at all. Mm. And you'd swear it's he's on the decline. So I left it another week and then my brother got on the phone to me and he said look I if I had to tell you he said I would say come home because no. I don't I don't feel like he's got much longer no. and that was all I needed I packed a bag I booked a flight I scooped up Can river baby, yeah. and went to Perth and he was about 14 weeks at that stage river no. so um and I think the day I got there was a Monday it was a Monday and um, when I, by the time I'd sort of taken that time to book the flight and travel over, it was a 24 hours, um, he was in hospital but they'd moved him home and um, he was already on morphine, right. which is never great. And then he was a little bit out of it but he knew that I was there and he just sort of, you know, I saw him in bed and I was like, oh you're so much more frail than the last time yeah. I saw you and I climbed in behind him and just sort of gave him a hug and sort of spooned him and just started to cry and then he just said that's okay my lovely he said you can cry but don't cry too much and I said I promise you I won't so I just sucked it up because I thought I've got to be strong here for him for mum you know I don't want him to see me devastated um because he go he's he went through so many different stages of you know, they get very angry at first when they get diagnosed and, yeah. and, and a bit resentful and then they sort of go, I want to fight it and then they feel a bit defeated and then right at the end it's just such a, an acceptance. Yeah. You know, he'd accepted it and he was fine with it. Right. And um, I think it was his way of going, just it's fine. I'm, yeah. I'll be, I'm going to be better. Yeah, you know? yes, yeah, yeah. So, um... The next day he was, you know, they'd come back and he was sort of out of it a bit more. And then, um, 
and then it was on the the Wednesday that I said to my so it's so quiet in his room it's really really quiet um because I was sitting with him and then I made him a playlist of Rod Stewart songs and I was on when um on my phone because he loved Rod Stewart and I thought I'll put together a little playlist oh. and then I started playing it on my phone and um my my brother had come over one of my brothers had come over and my mum was there and and just he started to sort everything started to just slow down and then about by about the fourth song in he just went yeah and um it was just so it's i mean it's it's the worst thing i can think you can go through but at the same time it was probably the best possible outcome because it was in his sleep, he was pain, well, you know, you imagine he was pain free yeah. because he was so still and so calm. He was listening to his favorite songs. Yeah. He had his family around him. Um, and I was just so happy that I, that I ha just had the instinct to jump on a plane and go home. Because yeah. if I wasn't there for that, oh, it no. would just haunt me. It would, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I have a lot to be grateful for, for him, for how it happened, you know. It could have gone. It could have gone, you know, a number of different ways. 